Hi, sisters and brothers. So there has been a lot of talk about uh, believism salvation and uh, works salvation. You know, some people call it lordship salvation, I guess. I don't know. It's all I know is there, there's a difference between works and grace. And um, it really has been laid upon my heart because I go through YouTube and I see so many people either preaching works salvation and law or uh, grace, pure grace, which is the true gospel. Uh, it's the whole theme of the scripture is grace, saved by grace through faith. Or they are teaching um, uh, grace and works. When, when your works fail, when your flesh fails, then you fall back on grace. So it's a mixture. And one breath they're saying, we're saved by grace through faith. And then the next breath they're saying, um, works of the flesh uh, to make you holy or to, you know, not lose salvation or uh, things like that. And it's a lot of people are confused. And um, so with prayer and everything the Lord has just shown me over this past year, because I come through churches from churches that are law, uh, Old Testament, you know, Old Covenant, um, and they taught works, salvation, and that you could lose your salvation. And um, they didn't teach the finished work of the cross, the finished work that Jesus did in his perfect flesh. Um, you know, a life for a, for a life is basically, at, we lost our lives um, in the garden when sin entered in. And then, um, you know, they had perfect bodies, they had perfect lives, and we lost that from the garden. And then Jesus had to come and give his perfect life so we could to atone for us so that everyone that believes on him could be saved. So, you know, and if you read John 6, John 6 talks all about, and Jesus' own words, you know, if you eat of me, if you drink, eat my body and drink my blood, uh, you are saved, you know. And um, I really love... Uh, John 6 because Jesus explains it perfectly but um, so I believe the Lord gave me a dream last night um, about some things that are going on and some issues that are be have arisen here in the past few days and so in this dream it started out that I was in a um, let me see can you guys see this oops not that one hold on you see that better? I don't know if that's my screen or, but in the stream, I was in an office building and um, in this office, there were um, stacks of printer paper and um, copy machines and printers and computers. And there was a round meeting table and um, there were other people there. Um, I believe, you know, believers, uh, faith believers and YouTubers and um, we were just, you know, hanging out. We were hanging out. That was our office. And we were hanging out and just talking. And, and uh, people, you know, were happy and everything. And off to the side of this, um, there was a bedroom. Now, in the office area, there was a big window, plexiglass window. And if you looked outside of this window, there was a hallway. And so in the dream, I had found this purse and I didn't, I had taken it into the bedroom. Now the bedroom symbolizes rest. Your bed symbolizes resting in Christ. You're resting on the finished work of the cross. And that's always how the Lord shows uh, the bed to me is represents resting in him, the finished work of the cross. You're not doing works. So I took this purse and I put it on this bed and there was this other <clears throat> sister with me and we were examining the contents of this purse. Now the purse represents a person and who they are. And as I was taking the contents out of this purse, there was a box of fake nails. 
right here. Now the nails represent the nails. It represents Jesus' work on the cross. He was nailed to a cross. He shed his blood so that all the, that believe upon him might not perish but have everlasting life, right? So I took these fake nails out and in the drawer I'm thinking, why does she have fake nails in her purse? And, uh, and there was some makeup in there. It was like um, the round pots of like glittery makeup. And there were like a bra, there was just a bunch of stuff in there. And I was, and there was a belt in there. And um, the belt represents the belt of truth. Now, uh, so we got fake nails and we have a belt in there. And I took this belt. So whoever this person was that believed what they believed thought they they had a belt of truth but they had fake nails in there so whatever they believe is is a fake gospel it's not the true gospel of grace it's a it's a fraud it's it's uh works okay because this is an answer to my prayer here and so i took this belt and i try to put everything back in and the belt barely even fit in her purse to begin with it was the first thing popping out so Anyway, so I tried to put everything back in and it wouldn't fit. The next part of the dream was um, there was a sister or somebody that had said, oh, Jessica lost her purse. And so now in the dream, I'm getting kind of nervous. Now here comes the condemnation because of things that have been coming here in the past few days. So now I'm under this condemnation in my dream because... I'm like, oh no, did I steal her belt of truth? You know? <laughs> but she has the fake nails in there. It's a fake gospel. So this belt represented her own truth. What she thought to be truth, but it's not. And um, so I told this girl, Jessica, she kept following me around. And I said... You know, I told her, well, I don't know where your purse is at. And I was thinking, how am I going to get all this stuff back into her purse and put it back where it was found? Because, <coughs> hold on a minute, guys. So, okay, I'm back. So, she kept following me around and was worried about her belt in the purse. That, that somebody would, you know, find it. And find her fake nails and stuff in her purse and you know she would be revealed and um you know it's like mixing mixing truth with with the fake um law and grace works works fleshly works with the finished works on the cross so um then it happened that she had gone out into this hallway and she was standing in front of that window that looked into the office where everybody was at. And she had accidentally got locked out of this, this room. And she was looking in and she was standing there. Her arms were folded and watching all of us. And, and in my dream, I was like, okay, she's locked out. You know, I'm not going to let her back in. Because <laughs> she's, she's, she's preaching, she's carrying the, the false nails. And then I looked, there was a big long table in front of that window on the office side. And I seen there were, were a lot of boxes that looked like this, but they were longer. And she had all her stuff partitioned in there, like extra contents of her purse that were never in the purse. It was really weird. And there were more fake nails. Um, there were more um, just weird things like you would never put in a purse. It, it was really weird. And for some reason, I was thinking, well, that's not going to fit back in the purse. And I kept thinking to myself, well, maybe I should just try to find her purse or take it off the bed and put it, I don't know, grab that stuff and put it back in the purse. So in this dream, I was under condemnation from, from the things I had been thinking before I went to bed. Like, is this person right? You know, do, do we have to do, try to make, perfect our flesh? Um, for God to accept us and to be holy and pleasing to the Lord. Do we have to do that, Lord? I mean, is, is James being taken out of context? You know, because the spiritual works, the works that we do are spiritual. 
the work the work that we do is to believe upon God and believe upon Jesus as his son and um, you know spiritual works belief love forgiveness kind kindness long suffering gentleness meekness you know it's not perfecting and puffing up our flesh with fake nails what do you do when you put fake nails on you glue them to your fingernails and what do your hands represent they represent your works but your works are your spiritual works not if I quit doing this and I perfect myself over here and I'm working on my, you know, working on yourself, la, la, la. That's, that's not what that means. What James talking about faith without works is dead. That's, that's not what that means. It's taken out of context. We're talking about faith. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, so she's standing there with this grimace on her face. And watching all of us, and I'm thinking, I'm just going to leave her out there because I just, you know, I don't want her to know that I was going through a purse and I found what I found. And so, um, so we sit down at this table. Now, okay, let me tell you something. In real life, I knew a girl, named, it was this girl, Jessica, that I knew when I was like 17 or 18. And everything about her had to be perfect. She was a perfectionist. She was one of those girls that had the long, flippy hair and, you know, little cute schoolgirl dress on with the little new knee-high boots and her nails had to be perfect and her makeup had to be perfect and her she had to use a certain kind of shampoo to make her hair look perfect and, you know, everything was perfect. And um, even when, one thing I noticed about her, even when she opened like a mayonnaise jar, her hands had to be positioned a certain way to look beautiful and perfect as she was opening any type of jar or soda pop or bread bag or anything like that. It had to be perfect. She was the one that had to use a certain shampoo because when she cut her hair, she was going to donate it. And it had to be the best perfect products. You see what I mean? So here's this girl, Jessica, and I ex have already examined her purse, which is her. And, and her name means God beholds, like God is ex looking at her, beholding her, examining her. I mean, it does mean rich too. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, hold on. I have a little girl over here. Okay. So sorry about that. So this girl in real life, everything had to be perfect about her. She perfected her flesh and over was always, um, OCD about everything. And, um, you know, that's what works is. That's what works is. You work on your flesh and you work on your flesh and you work on your flesh and you add to the finished work on the cross. Um, you know, you clean your cup on the outside, but on the inside, there's no love. There's no forgiveness. Um, you put yourself higher above everybody else. Um, you're not humble. Um, you don't realize that you are still a sinner and so is everybody else. Um, it's, it's, um, self-righteousness and you don't realize you're adding to the finished work of the cross. You're adding to it and it's a slap in God's face. That's what Paul said. It's you're, you're making the work on the cross to no effect by adding to with your works and, and your perfectness in your flesh. And it's a stinky odor to the Lord. And so, um, I was, so then all of a sudden we were sitting at this table, um, that was in the office with a bunch of other people and this girl named Connie walked up. Now Connie means strong willed and she was another person, um, from my high school years and, um, I had two encounters with her in my high school years. One was we were like eight years old and I told her that, she, you know, eight years old, you're innocent. And I noticed that she had a lot of earwax in her ears, you know, that could, keep, that could keep you from hearing. And I was like, oh, here, you should clean your ears out. It was innocent, you know, but she took it the wrong way because she thought she was perfect. 
she thought she was so beautiful with this beautiful red hair and all that. She didn't want to hear, have no one tell her, you know, how to work, you know, that type of thing. And, um, you know, sometimes we can get a spiritual earwax build up in our ears and we can't hear what God's trying to tell us. And we take it different ways and, you know, we're, we don't interpret it correctly. And we have this spiritual earwax build up in our ears. And the second encounter with Connie was she wanted me to do her type out one of her exam papers. And so at lunchtime, I went over to her house and I typed it up real fast on this old typewriter, not an electronic one, one where you really have to press down those keys. And I misspelled some words and I got some things wrong on her paper for her. And she turned it in and she got a D on her paper. And she never talked to me again, ever. She, it was all my fault. She didn't get an A. Um, so here we go again. Enter in someone else that is all about being perfect, doesn't want to listen, trying to perfect their flesh. Uh, she, she was a pot, you know, another popular girl. But, you know, the reason why I did that for her was out of love, out of kindness, out of trying to help her. Um, I wanted her to be my friend, you know, but it backfired on me because she was trying to be so perfect and she thought I did it to her on purpose. I don't know what the deal was. She never talked to me again. But in this dream, Connie had went over and unlocked the door for Jessica, who was standing in the hallway. So she could come in and and get come back in and find her purse or whatever. And so all of us are sitting there at the table and Connie walks up and slams herself down at the table in the seat and looks at me and rolls her eyes. And I said, why did you let her back in? Um, you know, we want to, we are trying to do like real work in here, <laughs> but the work we were doing was just talking to one another, loving one another, um, being with one another, um, you know, we had printers and copiers and stuff, and that represents that we are um, reading the, you know, spiritually going through scripture, um, making videos, you know, teaching people about G the love of Jesus, teaching people a true gospel of grace, teaching people about his work on the cross, you know, and in the meantime, loving one another and forgiving one another and speaking to one another and talking to one another and, and being good to one another. And when I said, we're doing real work in here, like we, <laughs> she's got her, her purse, she's worried about her purse with her fake nails and her tr belt of truth, which isn't really even the truth. You know, does God still love that, that woman? Yes. He does, but there's a time where we go on the examination table and, uh, you know, the Lord brings these things to our attention. Look, you're not really telling people what I did and that they're saved and that there's nothing else that you can add or take away. You, there, you can't earn your salvation. It is a free gift. Okay. It's grace saved by faith through grace. Okay. And, and the Lord had to go rounds with me on this because I was so brainwashed and stuck in the law of the church building. Um, you have to be a certain way and do certain things and quit doing that and don't do that. And yes, will the Holy Spirit convict you of things in your life? Yes, he will. If it's not for his will, you know, but <clears throat> if you're not hurting somebody, or being mean, you know, being mean to somebody or abusing somebody or, you know, he'll convict you of those things because that's not God's will. His will is love and forgiveness and mercy and long suffering. But as far as working on yourself and, and plumping yourself up and, and, and primping, um, and trying to exalt yourself above other people, like you're holy and other people are not. That's, that's not the true grasp. You have to do something extra to be saved or you can lose your salvation because you're out there on a stripper pole, but you still believe in Jesus. But, you know, you can quench the spirit, but you're not going to lose your salvation. Are you going to be living the life that God wants you to live full of blessings and, and gifts and this and that? No, you're not. You're going to lose out on that type of blessing lifestyle that the Lord wants you to have. But do you still have the Holy Spirit? 
Yes. Have you quenched the spirit? Yes. Have, you might not hear God's voice, you know? Yes. But that doesn't mean you're saved. Like someone from a church building looks at the stripper mama feeding four kids and says, oh, well, you need to really clean up your life because God don't like that. God's not going to love that. God don't, God's not going to look upon that too kindly. They, they have nothing to say about it. They need to go. All right, guys, I'm sorry. It Like, the devil does not want this message out. Every time I try to do a grace message like this, it's, it's, or share something the Lord has showed me about grace or something happening in the body of Christ, I, I, I get come against full. <laughs> um, so Connie slams down and she looks at me and rolls her eyes and she just let Jessica back in. And uh, that was the end of that scene. And the next scene was that I was in my old house, which I used to live on a street named Church Street. And I was in the living room, and I was laying in bed with my daughter in this bed. Now, the bed represents resting in Christ, believing on the finished work of the cross. I'm resting. I'm not running around trying to work on everything in my life because I'm trying to have a good image, and I think it's going to get me, clo you know, closer to God, and it's going to earn help more earn my salvation. I'm not doing those things because I know I'm saved. I know the Lord speaks to me. I know that I have faith. I know that I'm resting in God. Um, I don't have to go and try. I'm already made clean. I'm already made clean by my faith that I believe that he's the Messiah and that he died for me. I'm made clean on the inside. I'm not trying to wipe myself on the outside and put an appearance I'm just, I am who I am, and that's how the Lord loves me. I'm resting in his grace. And uh, so we're laying there, and I have scissors under the blanket because I look out the window, and I see a guy named James, and he is holding a gun to a guy named Marshall. He's holding a gun to his head. And I'm thinking, this is, this is bad. And James had a crazy look in his eyes, okay? And um, he entered into my home and he took Marshall and put him in the bedroom. Now, the bedroom represents resting. The bed rep represents resting. Okay. And he walked over to me and pointed the gun at me. Now, James represents works. James preached about works, faith and works. Faith without works is dead. Um, which we know that that's spiritual works. We're not talking about fleshly works, how to work on yourself to be worthy to go to heaven. And he pointed the gun to my face. And then I realized he, I recognize him. He's another guy I went to school with. His name is, was James Williams. And um, he was also a stuck up uh, type of guy that never gave anyone the time of day, always hung out with the popular crowd, never talking to those, those poor kids, you know, um, those kids that were just outcasts, which that's what I was. And, um, I recognized him and I sat up in bed and I put down my scissors and I said, James, I didn't realize that was due. I said, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Okay. James is just alone by himself, represents works. And he started to sob. And I gave him a hug. And I said, why are you doing this, James? And now he had put Marshall in the bedroom. Marshall means a servant, servant of God. Now Marshall's in there resting. Now in real life, Marshall's a bad guy to someone, self-righteous person sitting in a church pew, if they were to come out and look at Marshall, he believes in God. But to someone else, he'd be a bad guy. He's sitting in prison right now <laughs> for just for like failure to appear for a warrant. But to, you know, to anybody else, he'd be a terrible guy. Oh, you believe in Jesus, but look at you. You haven't cleaned your life up. Obviously, you're doing something bad. God's not helping you out. You know, he's not delivering you, yada, 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 the whole church building thing. 
um, brainwashing. I'm not saying God can't deliver you, you guys. I'm just saying that's how people that sit in a church, that's how they think. They sit on a pew and they look over at someone that comes in off the street or someone that's been there for a few months and there's no improvement in their life and they judge that person. Well, they must not be doing things that are pleasing to God because look at them. They're still in their same predicament. They haven't had, um, you know, deliverance or whatever. And that's baloney. That is baloney. You're just as disgusting as who you are looking at and that you think are disgusting. Because we're all saved by grace through faith. <clears throat> okay. So then the next scene was I was at my old church. And this was a United Pentecostal church. And James was there. And he had turned. And now James went to another law church that I only attended like once. But I see them there like, oh, you go to this church? And, um, when we got, when I got older, I seen him, I took my daughter to this church down the street and he was there. And that was another big time law church. Work on yourself to get to heaven, change yourself to get to heaven. And if God's not changing you, then something's wrong with you and you're not going to heaven. It was that type of mentality. And that's not the true gospel of God. And so the next scene, okay, so we were, we were at my old church that I went to for like seven years. It was a United Pentecostal. You can't cut your hair. You have to wear skirts. You, have, you can't wear makeup. You can't wear a wedding ring. Um, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. You know, all this law and work things falls into those categories. It's not just if you wear skirts or, you know, or if you knock on doors, that's, that's the law church. It's not just that. It's every other thing that is not the finished work on the cross. That's all law. That's not grace. You have to start this and that and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. That's everything from it is finished on the cross and, and back is law. Just because you're not United Pentecostal and you're not Jehovah's Witness and you're not Mormon and you're not Catholic um, doesn't mean that you can't be caught in law and work salvation. Those are the people that preach both. Um, they say in one, one breath, we're saved by grace through faith. And then the next breath, they say, quit smoking or you're not going to heaven. Um, you know, there's some extremes. There are extreme people that say, uh, I, I know. Thank you. Um, I shouldn't have any more because I, that's gluttony and I'm going, I'm going to go to hell for that. Or um, some people say, if you don't work on these things in your, on your flesh, um, the Lord's going to think you don't love him. That, that's throw that out the window because God finished the work on the cross because we're filthy from the garden. It's in our DNA. Sin is in our DNA. Um, you can't tell me that that church person hasn't looked across the pew and seen pastor's wife shake hands with the, the beautiful, you know, fleshly built up family. And you're over there on the other side of the church. You're like, how come she don't come and do that to me? How come, how come that's not happening? Or how come, why are they invited to dinner at pastor's house? And, and I've never been invited. Oh, because they're not teaching Sunday school in the back or whatever it is. I've been to a lot of those churches. I've seen a lot of things. And that, that single woman comes in off the street and she's got her kids and, and they're starving for spiritual food and tangible food. And no one does nothing. But sometimes that little perfection, self-righteous uh, little sister there will come and be like, I'll pray for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll pray for you. Oh, what do you do? I'm a stripper. Oh, well, I'll pray the Lord will, you know, deliver you. Really? Yeah. You know, we have to look at things. It is finished on the cross. I'm not saying everybody run out and be a stripper, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Because that type of lifestyle is, you don't reap rewards for that type of, of lifestyle. And have I seen the Lord work and move people to other better jobs and stuff? Yes, I have. Because he is a merciful and loving and righteous and just God. And um, would he have us in that type of lifestyle? No. But 
You don't come up to someone and judge them is what I'm saying. You don't judge if they're saved or not by by their lifestyle, but by their fruits. You see what I mean? They'll love one another. They'll be kind to one another. They'll be long-suffering. They'll be giving. They'll be meek. They'll be humble. They're not going to prance around and they're with their fake nails on, you know, <laughs> in a spiritual sense, you guys. I hope you guys see what I'm trying to talk about and what the Lord was showing me in this dream. So we're at this church and there's James and he's sitting on a pew outside of the church. And he it has turned old. His flesh has turned wrinkly. His flesh just looks disgusting. It's gross. And when you try to do works to gain your salvation and and add to the work on the cross, the Lord is viewing your flesh as like filthy rags. It's gross. If we were able to be saved by our own works and our own bettering ourselves and our own, you know, uh, working through our sin and this and that, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. You see what I'm saying? There'd be no need for God, for God to come down and put on a robe of flesh and die on the cross. A perfect flesh to give his life as an atonement. If we ourselves had any work to, you know, that could save us. He wouldn't have to do that, you guys. So here's James sitting over there on the pew, and he looks disgusting. He's withered. He's sinewy, sinewy looking. Wrinkles all over. He looks like he turned like 110 years old. And he, he has no teeth. You know, his hair's all long and shaggy. And, you know, so to me, this whole dream was the Lord saying, look, every, the things that I've developed here, I'm trying to teach people something, and it's the true gospel. It's the true gospel of grace and the finished work on the cross. You cannot add or take away from your salvation. Nothing you do with your, with your hands to better yourself is going to give you salvation from what I've already given you, from what Jesus has already given you. He's, you know, that is the true gospel. And, you know, I go through YouTube and I see a lot of people saying, oh, you know, this and that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, they weren't married. But now I know they're going to heaven because they're married because they were living in sin. Okay, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not living in sin. You're not walking in sin anymore. You're a new creation. You've made clean. No matter it, what your flesh is doing, because your flesh is always going to be sinning. It's in our DNA. We are corruptible. We die. Our, our flesh is dying every day. It's aging. It's corroding. It's, it's, it's death. We're born into death. But when you believe upon Jesus Christ and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you're spiritually, his spirit gets put in you. And now there's a difference between the fleshly man and the, and the inner man, the spirit man and the, the flesh man. There's a difference. And people don't understand that. And the one thing the devil would love to do is take that gospel and twist it and make you think that you have to earn salvation by your own works. And when you get that mentality, you preach that to other people. And when you preach that mentality to other people, because nobody's the same, somebody might be like, oh, easy for me. Okay, I'll, I'll quit doing that. And then I, now I'm saved because I believe in Jesus and my own works. But other people might be homeless. Other people might be in predicaments. Other people might be mentally handicapped. Other people might be depressed. Other people might be in places in their life where they're, okay, they're never going to be saved if they have to do works to earn salvation. They're not, they're, they can't do it. Our flesh is weak. Our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. It's dead. It's gross. It's disgusting. But if the devil, you know, if we, the devil doesn't want it out that uh, believe on Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior and you shall receive life. It's the simplest thing. 
he wants to turn it into like a, a one plus two is is three, like a mathematical equation. And it is not that. So people, you know, they know they can never live up to the law. They can never live up to, to works. They can never live up to the things that, that the church building is saying they have to do. So they don't even try. It takes them away from God. It takes them away from salvation. It takes them away from the cross. And once, once you believe in Jesus, you know, he comes and dwells inside of you. He starts being the author of your life, the, the finisher of your faith. And he gives you a measures of things, you know, and he leads and guides you and he starts speaking to you. And now you're set free. Now you're free to love like how God loved you when he hung on the cross. Then you start producing uh, fruits. Because God loved me. Now I'm going to love that person. God loved me and I'm disgusting. I'm going to love that person and they're disgusting. God gave me grace and I'm disgusting. I'm going to forgive that person and give them grace and they're disgusting. You see what I mean? I'm homeless and I go, get, you know, I'm on food stamps, but God loves me. I'm going to love that other homeless person that's on food or that's where I used to be. But there's no difference between us. I'm going to love them anyway. You know, it's about grace and love and mercy that the Lord shows us the true gospel grace, the finished work on the cross is that we give to other people and we tell them about God's love and that the Lord loves them. It's not about um, works. Works does not make you righteous. It does not save you. We're all disgusting. Filthy rags. And I hear other people saying, oh, we're saved by word for, you know, faith through grace. We're all filthy rags. But then go work on yourself. You guys go work on yourself. Hurry up now. Jesus is coming. Go work on yourself. Throw it in the garbage. Your works do not bring you salvation. And that is scriptural. That is scriptural. And people try to argue it every which way that they can. And it's just not true. You can't add to the finished work on the cross. All right, you guys. I love you guys. And I hope I just, you know, things that the Lord shows me, it's hard for me to articulate. And um, sometimes it gets frustrating, but I love you guys. And, you know, I hear people, I see people commenting on other people's channels. They're like, oh, I hope I'm saved. You know, I just, uh the fact that you're even the fact that you're even worried about your salvation lets me know that you believe in Jesus Christ and you have a heart inside of you that you, that you love God. Just that fact alone, you're saved. Okay? <laughs> uh I've been so busy and this and that. And I wish I could do more for the Lord. I'm in a wheelchair and you know, my heart goes out to these people because they're watching all these other channels, these men and these biddies, preach works, but then they, they preach it under a covering of saved by grace through faith. And it, it, it upsets me because that's not the truth. It's a false gospel. And I've been, and you know, I don't just look this stuff up and I'm not like some theologian where I'm just like looking up all these articles. What does this person say? I'm not like that. Everything I've seen has been shown to me personally and from the Holy Spirit in my dreams through prayer, through asking, through audibles and dreams. The Lord said, show me, I am Moses. I saved my people, not Moses. I did. And he was mad. Because I was listening to all these other peoples, all these other peoples. And that's when the Lord told me I was an overeater. You're watching all these other peoples that they're lying to you. They have fake nails in their purse. Those aren't the nails that pierced me. They're not, they're not preaching the message of the cross and forgiveness and love. So I don't know, guys. 
I just, you know, and I know who these women are. I'm just, I'm not going to say, but I just pray that, you know, the Lord just works it out. And, and the Lord loves these people. The Lord loves these people, you know, and, and, uh, but you know, when you start overstepping your boundary and telling people to work on their flesh and work on their sins and don't walk in sand, that, that makes no sense. If you think about it, really, it makes no sense. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your sins are cast as far as the east is to the west. He don't keep bringing and bringing and bringing and bringing up your sin. And they say it's, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. And when you reread scripture with the thought in mind in your head that you're saved by grace and not works, it will click. I had to reread through the Bible the Lord had to show me scriptures and dreams. Okay, the writing on the wall, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, but he had to show me things. And it started to click. And and Sister Sherry, the Lord sent her into my life to show me what pure grace and it is finished means. Because it, I, I wouldn't have gotten it. I would have been living in fear, guilt, shame, and condemnation the rest of my life, probably. Um, yeah, so, you know, pray about it, you guys. Reread these scriptures with grace in mind. With You don't have to work on yourself to get to heaven in mind, and you will see. You know, the Lord says, uh, if you're hot or cold, I'd, you know, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. Well, I'd think, I'd sit there and think, well, huh, so if I'm cold, he's going to spit me out? Or he's got, he likes me if I'm cold and I'm just frozen? And, 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 and me and Cheryl were talking about that. And she said, that's not what that means. You know, it doesn't mean if you're on fire for God or if you're just not on fire for God, if you're just sitting there frozen in your life, not doing nothing for God, that's not what that means. You have to look at what was happening back in those days, what Jesus was looking at. He would look at things around the cities and use them as parables. So she tell me about the aqueduct, the aqueduct that came through Roman, you know, that delivered their water. They had hot water and they had cold water and the lukewarm water. It was good for nothing. The cool water was like a, a sweet, cold, refreshing drink. It cooled them down. It was used for different purposes in the city. The hot water was used for baths, you know, soaking, this and that. That was good too. Both the cold and the hot water were good. The lukewarm water wasn't really good for nothing. They couldn't use it like to heal bruises. They couldn't soak in it. They, when they drank it, you just want to spit it out. It was good for nothing. So, there, you know, there's things that, that people use in the church building that doesn't make sense. It, it, there's no standing. That's not what that means. There's a lot of things taken out of context. Anyway, guys, this is so long right now, but I love you guys. And um, I hope I have explained better, um, you know, salvation by works um, and just pure grace. It is finished the finished work on the cross and people that mixed mix works and grace together for salvation. And I love you guys and God bless you all.